time to agree, time to agree, time to agree, little baby, come with me and we'll agree, because we agree. <laughs> Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well. And it's time for another edition of Let's Agree, where I go online, I take your uh, well-established, non-controversial opinions, your very easy to answer questions, and uh, your cold takes, and I respond to the most agreeable ones, literally in this video. That's what I do. Let's go. Happy music is the best music. I'm not sure if I would say it is the best music, but I would agree in so far as it is highly underrated. You know, there are some great tracks out there that are very happy, very euphoric, like a so happy to, to so happy together. I would love to hear music that continues to embrace that type of euphoria. I think there's a lot of music out there that people misconstrue as being happy when it's really just uh, very groovy, maybe upbeat dance music that's very sexual and hedonistic in nature. And I don't think those emotions or expressions are wrong. I enjoy quite a bit of music that, that goes down that path. But music that is purely expressed for its mode of happiness, uh, I, I think is an underappreciated and an underutilized uh, mode in a lot of popular music today. And I think there are a lot of music critics that unfairly critique happy music as it not being as significant as sad music or not as cathartic or as important as sad music. I, I don't uh, agree with that. I think it's kind of corny to fetishize sadness and depression and negative emotions. Sure, I feel a lot of these emotions and some of my favorite records have those emotions. I mean, some of my top albums of all time <laughs> showcase those emotions, but uh, th those emotions shouldn't exist. Uh, purely to be fetishized as something that's cool and sexy and hip and awesome. I mean, these are uh, literal, you know, types of, of uh, suffering, in my view, and uh, which, which are legitimate and should be appreciated and understood as such. Uh, they're not a fashion statement. It's important to take care of your teeth. I agree. It is very important to take care of your teeth. You should brush twice a day. You should floss daily. And you should, if you, if you can handle it and afford it, you should do some, uh, do some mouthwash as well. That's good for your teeth, too. So just stick to a tooth dental hygiene regimen and you'll be fine. I love you. Oxygen is great. You could be talking about the element. You could also be talking about the swan's song. I'm not sure which, but I agree. And I'm not sure if um, I would rather live in a world where we're missing the gas oxygen or the swan song. You know, even if we all die because we can't breathe anymore, at least that swan's track exists. Kanye did the right thing in pushing back Yandi's release date a lot. You know, honestly, as much as I would like to hear Yandi right here, right now, I, uh, I agree. Mostly because, given the state Kanye was in, it was not going to be likely that he would follow up Ye and all the other projects he was dropping around that time, uh, Kitsy Ghost and Tiana Taylor and so on and so forth. It was not likely he was going to drop a record that was going to be as good or better than all of those projects, sort of rushing it out in, in the way that he would have had to if he were to drop it immediately after. Not only that, but with Kanye's next record, I would like to hear him in a slightly different headspace, and we do get a slightly different headspace with each new Kanye album. I'm not sure if I want to hear another record that's coming from the place of all of this mental anguish, all of the drama, all the TMZ interview stuff, all the slave comments, all the Donald Trump MAGA stuff, and I would like to hear him coming from, from a different place, being in a different place in his life. And I think taking the time that Kanye currently is right now is bringing him to that space, and I think ultimately that will result in a better record, or at least an album that's that's easier to uh, digest. Where's Cal? He's right over there. Hey,
He's over there. That's where he is. What was the reason you did your first Not Good with Designer's New English instead of giving it a very negative review? Was Not Good already a concept in your mind, but you were waiting for a project to test it on? Also, hey, your teeth are nice. I'd even say, the, the best. best. It actually was not a concept in my mind already when I decided to embark on that review. The record was, in my view, just so bad that I didn't think doing a normal review for it would bring home exactly what I wanted to say and what I wanted to communicate, not only in the review itself, but with obviously the thumbnail, with the title. And since then, the not good reviews have mostly been me not going, and maybe this doesn't look all that different from you guys from the outside, but to me, it feels like I'm not going as deep. I'm not going as in depth. I'm mostly just reacting to the really awful baseline surface level things that make the record so bad any inner details that it's based on are going to be poisoned as a result because, again, the foundation under all of it is rotten or it's cracked or it's awful. Ridge is better than any other wallet brand. Well, first, let me say, I agree. And secondly, if you believe that, you better be hitting up that link down below and use promo code Melon. to get 10% off of your Ridge wallet order. Join the minimalist wallet revolution, everybody. Join. <laughs> How are babies? made. I agree. How are babies made? According to wikihow.com, how to answer where do babies come from, children are notorious for asking funny and sometimes inappropriate questions. Well, we know that because if we look at my comment section, that's all that that's full of. However, if your kid is asking about where babies come from or how they're made, you should try to give them an honest answer that they can understand. Be sure to assess the situation and tailor your response to be age appropriate. Okay, I'll do my best. Stay calm and relax when the topic comes up. Okay, I think I'm relaxed. Two, defer to the child's parents if someone else's child asks you about babies. Well, I'm pretty sure none of y'all are my kid. Pretty, pretty sure. sure. So I think what I can safely say here is, you know, you should ask your mommies and daddies where they think babies come from because that is a conversation that I'm not sure I'm comfortable having with you. Plus, you know, I don't want to give you guys, I don't want to give away any spoilers in this whole game of life. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe that's something that your mom and dad wanted to tell you about a certain way, and I don't want to jump the gun. I don't want to tell you all too much about babies and where they're coming from and all that stuff. So, you know, just, uh, just, just go ask your mommies and daddies. Cool? Grits tastes better with sugar. I am but a lowly Italian boy, so I honestly could not even argue with you, so I will just agree. Again, quite a bit of my family is hailing from that big, fat Italian boot, so I wouldn't even know what to do with a grit if you gave it to me. If you if you gave me a risotto, or if you gave me a, a, a gnocchi, yeah, I could, I could do something with that. I am even married to my wife, whose uh, who's, who's family they eat quite a, quite a few grits, and, uh, and I have still not even had a grit. I am gritless. I am over here gritless. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard will release more music. That is um, that is true. I, from what I understand, in 2020, they will be releasing their seven-part epic, uh, one hour each on every album, and it's just going to be this long, experimental, prog, rock, odyssey about photosynthesis and it's going to be amazing 10 out of 10 more music your best why you know review video was the first time you decided to use the new green screen format with each review being 10 to 15 seconds short i agree that that was a pretty fresh time for the why you know review but it has evolved into a lengthier format as of late because honestly what has changed is the sheer amount of records that I have to, or feel like, giving legitimate coverage month to month to month has expanded quite a bit. Uh, there are like dozens of albums each month that I feel like in a perfect world if I had all the time and all the brain capacity, I could give them legitimate reviews, but I, I again, don't have the brain capacity. I don't have the time. I can't review every single album. But I still think those records are worthy of a serious critique, or at least, 
you know, an endorsement or a mentioning as to why it didn't really work so much for me generally. So as a result, you know, a lot of the segments of the Why You Know Review are a little less memey, a little more serious, a little more opinion intensive. And uh, yeah, that's, that's essentially where we are. Etika's death is a tragic reminder that we internet users should be more serious about mental illness, depression, and suicidal people. Yes, I would absolutely agree. I would also say I think his death serves as a reminder, or at least uh, an illuminator, as far as how difficult it can be to be an online content creator. And I don't say this to uh, create a pity party for me, for myself, because I, I, for the most part, I feel fine. But there is a lot of pressure that comes along with creating content, especially streamers who have to be on all the time, engaged all the time, which can be very stressful. Um, again, there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of expectations, a lot of people put you on a pedestal, but I think it would be better if in the future, uh, maybe fans of, of uh, especially young online content creators whose mental and emotional state might be a bit more fragile, uh, or who have a history of, of dealing with mental health issues, if uh, maybe we were just generally a bit more sensitive to uh, them and what they needed and what they were going through, instead of just like hating on them, making their day worse, trying to shit on them, making fun of them, throwing them under the bus, um, or on top of all of that, uh, acting out of jealousy toward them because we think their lives are really cool and stress-free and we wish we were in the position that they're in. I try to do my best to reach out to people who I think are dealing with these issues. If I know them personally, I have a rapport with them and I don't think they're a total dirtbag. And I encourage the rest of you to do the same, not only, again, with uh, popular internet content creators, but people in your own lives who you think might be a dealing dealing with similar issues. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. That everyone has been another edition of Let's Agree. I'm glad that we could get together in this episode and agree. Uh, you're the best. I love you. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, agree forever.